When you look at exactly where we are in terms of vaccination rollout, how critical is the next two months to make sure that we're not vaccinating as cases rising, therefore increasing the probability of more, you know, mutations or variants? Yeah, this is going to be a very important sort of transition time as we move from vaccinating the uh, people who are at highest risk of get uh, it's being exposed to the virus or having the severest symptoms from the virus as we move to general to uh, vaccinating the general population, we're going to have to increase our effectiveness and efficiency in which we're vaccinating because now is the time we can utilize things like mass vaccination centers um, to get the vaccine out to as many people as possible. Um, with the new variants emerging, with COVID cases decreasing, but still at levels that are way too high for us to handle in terms of our medical infrastructure. Um, it's important for us to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible to help turn this corner. It, France doesn't have enough doses, but they also have maybe a bigger problem of people not wanting to get vaccinated. What's the U.S. like in terms of anti-vaxxers? Well, you know, there certainly seems that over the past few um, weeks um, of the vaccination campaign, uh, some polls have shown that there's been an increase in terms of the uh, willingness of Americans to get the vaccine. That's a good sign. Uh, we'd still like to see those numbers to be even higher than they are right now. Um, but I think that what we can take from the rollout of the vaccine is that these vaccines are safe. Uh, we haven't seen any signatures uh, different from uh, what was seen in the uh, clinical trials in terms of safety. And certainly as studies are coming out now looking at the efficacy of, of these vaccines, um, they, they, they induce really strong immune responses that appear to be very good at limiting virus replication. So everything looks good with the vaccine rollout so far. And I think that's stoking some confidence in yeah. the U.S. population. I feel it here, certainly. Dr. Peckhoff, just so you know, I'll have my second shot here at 11 a.m. this morning. Looking forward to that, uh, folks. Thanks to NYU Langone for great service. Dr. Peckhoff, uh, the Marvin I Martin Indyk, Indyk, the former U.S. ambassador to Israel, notes the Times of Israel with the statistics on what Israel has learned. Zero deaths and only four severe cases among 523,000 fully vaccinated Israelis. What's the best practice Israel's doing that we need to do? Well, you know, they were highly efficient at rolling out their vaccine, not only to the high-risk groups, but also into the general population. And I think that's the lesson to be learned from here. And the, and the, the rapid downtick in terms of severe and cases and hospitalizations and deaths is probably the most important thing that vaccines right. give us, that protection. And as the, the more efficiently you can roll this out, the okay. sooner you'll see those effects. I, I, I know we're, we're on a network of delicacies here, but let me cut to the chase. Why can't America do that? We put somebody on the moon. Why can't we replicate the best practices of Israel? Yeah, partially, I think this is a leadership issue. We need to have more centralized leadership, uh, more clear plans in terms of how people get vaccines and how to sign up for them and how to distribute them. Right now, certain states are doing a good job of that. Other states um, are so decentralized that people have to call 10 or 12 places to get on lists to, to hopefully get a vaccine, and that's not efficient. So centralized leadership, centralized guidance in terms of how to roll this out would go a long way to make these rollouts more efficient in different states. How many, um, Andrew Pekosh, variants are there out there? And, you know, the more we do genome sequencing, are we going to find many more variants that could not be, you know, taken care of by these vaccines? Yeah. Um, as we do more sequencing, we see lots of variants out there. This is not unexpected. This is a virus that mutates on a regular basis. Um, I and others are trying to lump these now into variants versus variants of concern. And those variants of concern are ones that have mutations in places that we know affect the function of the virus. So we have three major classes, the South African, the Brazil, and the UK variants, and then other minor ones are emerging that are still of, that, that are of concern because of the mutations that they have. These mutations can increase transmission, or they can make the virus a little less sensitive to antibodies that were induced by the vaccine or infection, and that's why we consider them variants of concern. Um, 
they're still sensitive to the vaccines. So this doesn't mean that we should <clears throat> stop our vaccination pro progress. It just means that we have to think now a little bit more long term about tweaking our vaccine formulations to make them even better against the strains that may be circulating in the next two to three months.